Um, so today I am working on the cross country guitar swap guitar. If you remember uh, in the video, the last video with Daryl, which you probably don't because it was a year ago, I got that green pick guard in for this purple guitar and I got some white pickups. So it's going to be like a Joker themed guitar, but it's not going to be all silly and say Joker and why so serious all over it and all that kind of crap. I actually just just popped on my Craigslist some brass saddles for 20 bucks that look like they'll fit this. So I'm going to go pick those up and then we're going to get started on putting this thing together, doing all the soldering and wiring it up, and hopefully playing it. Traveling down the road on a raft made of bones, me and small feet in our hands and drinking it. Woo! You guys have driving songs? I have driving songs. Okay, I actually had to turn the camera off because I only have like three minutes of uh, memory card left. Didn't know that. Anyway, uh, so, saddles acquired, and this is the first time this ever happened, but the guy brought them to me in a shot glass. I asked the guy, I was like, man, I wondered why you were bringing a shot out, but it makes sense now. So, yeah, back, back home now. Always hungry, but we never need a drink. Me and Smold, peeing in our hands, and drinking it. Well, we are back home, and on the porch, these little cutie pants, sphere, and mittens over here. Are out here on the porch and they want food. <laughs> Spear's always the first to dive in. Mittens is just letting me pet her like crazy lately. Which I know you guys are probably like, ew, you're petting porch kitties, but look how sweet they are. Look how sweet she is. This is pretty girl. Look at this pretty girl. Yes, she is. <laughs> All right, back to the guitar. Okay, we're back home with the guitar. We have our saddles newly collected. I'll go over some of these parts with you. Uh, but first I wanna talk about what we actually have to do to the body. So, if you remember, we got this green pick guard and it's a pretty good match for the Joker outfit. This plum purple and this green really look like that. And the white kind of made me think of his face, so I got these Guitar Madness pickups that kind of are interesting right but this pit guard this is placed a little bit farther away from the bridge than a lot of these uh, type pit guards are which is strange but I had to mark out using the pit guard as a template wood that I'm gonna have to remove to be able to fit the pickups in there so unfortunately all my good all right it's my own dumb fault I had a good bag of tools on the porch somebody took it it happened to have my good chisels in it so I got these cheap ones, uh, which are the wrong tool for the job, so we're going to use these. The potentiometers I'm using are pretty much my standard go-to for um, humbuckers, CTS 500K pots. They're a little bit beefier than uh, what normally comes in Squires for sure. So I may have to, let's, let's find out, let me see if I have to drill these holes out anymore. Oh, no, perfect, sweet. I love when a plan comes together. And on top of that, of course, uh, we're just using the input jack that it comes with, unless there are, ends up being a problem with it, then I'll replace that. But on top of that, of course, we got our shot glass filled with brass saddles, which is pretty cool. I think that's going to look neat on there, something a little bit different. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is start beating up this guitar to remove the excess here this little chunk and I've also gone ahead and marked my holes that I have to drill to fit the new pick guard because I don't care what a pick guard says when you buy it online I don't care if it says it fits your guitar model exactly it doesn't you're gonna have to drill some holes like every time I would recommend that anybody who's doing this please go to the store and get the right chisels because this is gonna take me forever because I'm being an idiot I'm just mad at myself for leaving the freaking tools on the porch. That was a while ago though. I've had time to replace this. Just have not done so. Having a cat fight right now. So obviously the uh, best way to do this would be to route this out, right? My router's in a nice case. 
nicely put up. I don't feel like dealing with that tonight. All right, I'm gonna finish this. I'll be right back. All right, so apologies for the glare, but uh, I managed to get that nice and channeled out. There's plenty of room for the pickup now. I only had to break three of those very crappy uh, <laughs> chisels. Figured we would uh, pull this plastic off real quick because I'd rather do this before I put the parts in because when I put the parts in, I don't want to have to rip the plastic around all of the parts, right? That's annoying. But yeah, that green looks way better with this uh, foggy plastic off. <clears throat> now, because I've told you in the beginning of this channel, I'm not going to lie to anybody. Let's take a look at my handy, handle work. handy work. Not too smooth, but also not too bad. I could paint this with shielding paint or something. It wouldn't be that big of a deal, but got plenty of room. So now we want to wire the pick guard up. If you'll notice, both of these say bridge pickups. I got these from Guitar Madness, and uh, the only option that I saw available for these was bridge pickups. Presumably, they're four single coils, but they just have two blades per coil. I wanted to show you exactly how these are set up. So let me let me see there. There we go. Unfortunately, Coconut ran off of my little instructions, so I can't remember the name, but it's a generic name. You can find them just by looking for four blade pickups, right, on the uh, Guitar Madness site on eBay. So there are five leads. You have red as your hot wire and black as your negative slash ground, which is also the, uh, the shield is wired to that. And then the coil tap wires in the center are going to be white and green. I've taped them off because I don't have any coil tap pots right now, but that may be a fun future thing since this is a Squire Strat and all. Might be fun to future coil tap it. So I am going to put in my potentiometers. I'm kicking myself for not buying a kill switch. I really wanted a kill switch. Gonna do our tone pot down here. I just realized I totally forgot to bust my switch out. I got a three-way switch somewhere for this thing, so I'm gonna have to go find that. And the volume knob here. Which for you guys who are doing pick guard stuff and you're just getting started, you're going to want to order short shaft split pots. I guess you can use solid pots if your uh, knobs will allow for it. But I use the split shaft. Alright my friends, I like to think that, well I've noticed that a lot of people who watch my channel are younger guys who are just, or, or younger girls who are just getting into working on instruments and while I'm not some crazy electronics guru I've been doing it a while and I have ways I do things so I'm going to try to explain this as easily and uh, as knowledgeably as I can that way if somebody's following along at home uh, you can go ahead and and do what I'm doing so what I like to do you see I've got my treble bleed which you don't need a treble bleed okay this is just something that I had lying around basically from an old project where I got two and I only needed one and uh, so the first thing I like to do is figure out where I'm going to put everything. So I've already trimmed these wires to match the lengths I need. Because this is going to be kind of laid down like this to fit the control cavity. So I like to scratch out my grounds. And uh, you may say, why are you scratching these brand new pots? Well, you want to promote adhesion between the solder and the uh, back of the pots. A lot of people will use excessive uh, flux and stuff. I, I don't do that. So right here I have another ground where I've just bent the lug up. So that's my third lug there. That's going to get, uh, and you, if you look, the, the ground is uh, the same lug on each potentiometer, right? And then we need a spot to connect the ground to the pot in the middle when we get to that point. Trust me, you're gonna wanna scratch those out. Now, if you look at the potentiometers, all it is is a variable resistor. Your hot lead comes in and then it exits and then this is just a variable resistor and all this capacitor does, it bridges the link 
between this lug and ground uh, to allow more or less volume through, or in this case, treble. Now over here, whenever you ground this off, your volume, it slowly variably shorts the entire signal to ground so that your uh, volume goes down. So on this switch, I only had a five-way. I thought I had a three-way. Ha, but this is a five-way. So here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna ignore the two outer lugs. You have eight lugs on your standard five-way switch, right? So we're gonna ignore the two outer lugs. Lugs two and three are gonna go together. Lugs six and seven are gonna go together. Lugs four and five are gonna go together. These are gonna be your, your mid output to, uh, this is gonna be your output to your volume control. That's gonna be your, let's see, where am I at here? That's gonna be your bridge humbucker. And then all the way up is gonna be your neck humbucker. And you gotta remember, it's a fulcrum. So when your switch is down, this is gonna be selected. When your switch is up, this is gonna be selected. So when it's all the way down, you're gonna have your humbucker in your bridge position on. So that means it has to be on these higher up lugs, these uh, lugs two and three. And vice versa, when you want your neck selected, it's gotta be wired here. Okay, that should make sense. So let's go ahead and put some solder on all this fun stuff. I would like to give a shout out to a new friend over on YouTube. He goes by Full Wave Wrecked. Full Wave Wrecked. Talking to that gentleman online tonight. I appreciate you watching my channel, sir. And uh, I do read the comments and everything. So if you guys want to leave me a comment, I will get to it and check it out. Now, I'll probably respond to you, or uh, in some cases, Daryl will. What you could do is uh, put a little wire in between each of these lugs that we need to connect together. But I've bent the lugs toward each other enough to where I can make a little solder bridge. Just like that. So that bridges my uh, neck humbucker part. And then I just bridged my central lead. And then I'm going to do the same to my bridge humbucker section. Just like that. Always warm the lug a little bit first. I don't like to build up too much solder on the pots. I like to build up kind of just what I think I'm going to need. So this is our ground lug here. Just making sure it is connected to the potentiometer. And here's the other thing. This is a lot of extra wire that we don't need. Look how long these are. I like to generally clip down my pickup wires, but in this instance, I don't know if I'm going to keep these in here or not. I don't know how good they sound, so I may change them out. So for now, all these wires are going to be left long, just in case I want to take them out and use them on another project where I need more length to the wires. In America, we tend to say wires, but I noticed a lot of my overseas buddies say leads, and for a long while I kept saying leads all the time, and it was confusing people. So if I say leads or wires, I mean the same thing, okay? Now everything is tinned. So here's the neck pickup. So you remember, we have to wire this to our bottom selection. A little bottom lugs here. And that is our hot lead, if you remember. I like to make sure my solder joints are not cold solder joints. Now you can ground the pickups off basically anywhere um, that has a ground. So we can ground them to the sides of the pot here, which I might do sides of the uh, switch here and then run that ground to volume might be the easiest way to do it but then you have the chance of your ground hitting one of these other lugs since I didn't leave enough <laughs> to get over there 
I may just do that. So yeah, let's let's tin these grounds here. Like I said, we're trying to make it as simple as possible. And you can avoid ground loop hum fairly easy if you just think about your circuit a little bit. Alright, so I am going to put this guy on the bottom right here of that lug. Let's go ahead and put in our capacitor. Alright, we got that in. Let that cool for a second. Other lug of the cap goes to the treble pot. Can you guys hear coconut sighing in the background because I'm not playing with them right now? <laughs> All right, got that guy there. Like to reinforce it a little bit right where the bend is. All right, okay, I'm back. So the way I approach working on guitar electronics is I generally like to build out my ground system first and then come back in with my hot lead. So this is the ground wire that goes to the bridge. This is the uh, thing that makes it, you know, buzz when you take your hand off the strings, but not when your hand's on the strings because you're grounding the thing. So this going to my volume lug or my volume potentiometer, and from the volume potentiometer, we're going to build what's called a star ground. So I've cut other lengths of ground wire that will fit what I need to ground the distances so that way I don't have a bunch of extraneous wire. The, the less amount of wire you use the less noise or uh, possibility for interference there is. And if we make a star ground we don't have this ground loop system where it can just keep feeding into itself in a circle. Everything is going to hit the volume and then exit through there into you, into the floor, whatever. Oh, and also, you don't have to use black for ground wire. I only have red and white wire in stock right now, so I'm using white for my ground. And because red is the color of the hot lead from the pickups, I am using red for that. So, probably could have shortened this one a little bit, but I'll try to butt it up like that. Alright, and I should mention we are building our ground from the bridge in. So here's our bridge wire, and now we have currently grounded our volume and our tone. So now we need to ground the switch. So that'll be another star, right? It'll come off the, lo off the uh, volume pot. And guys, I know most of you guys have your way of doing this, but, uh, you know, I don't go into a lot of detail anymore because I know I've done it before but just in case you haven't seen any old videos where I've talked about it I want to let the new guys know kinda of how I do things now this gets grounded remember where we grounded our pickups off this gets grounded to the switch and one thing I have noticed too is sometimes if you have a random buzz you can get rid of it by changing your ground so if for some reason this guy is buzzy I will go in and ground these pickups to the pot because normally I'll ground the pickups to the back of the pot in the same kind of star configuration as well alright making sure all my ground connections are strong and I like to build the hot leads from the switch out because we've already got our hots from the pickups to the switch so next we're going to go from our switch to our volume and we want to go from, uh, if you remember, our two center lugs because we've just kind of made this five way into a three way. So we're going to go from our two center lugs there to our center lug of our volume pot. Okay, so now we have to run to basically from the volume to our uh, tone pot over here. So that way we can leak the signal to ground. 
And we are going from this outer lug, the opposite of the ground, to the center lug of our tone pot. So that way we can leak our tone pot to ground later. So there we go. Center lug of the tone. Now, from this same lug, the same outer lug, we have to run our hot lead out. Okay, so when dealing with your jack on a Fender or a similar uh, passive guitar that only has, you know, a two lug input jack, you have a hot wire, which in this case is white. So don't let that be confusing because our ground is white in this, <laughs> in this one. And then you have a shield, which is your ground, uh, which is obviously just not coated. So the shield, I've already tinned. I'm going to wire that just straight to this ground right here. Actually, I'm going to wire it to my star ground, center ground. So keep everything nice and tidy in the center there. And then this lead goes to the same lead that comes off your switch. So that's it's pretty simple, right? Which, by the way, I've already tinned all my wires, tinned all my leads. If you don't know what that is, it's just putting a little bit of solder on the lead before you attach it to the lug, so that way it's already got some meltable material on it, so it attaches. So that is the wiring, guys. Pretty simple. Um, normally, I would take some uh, time and go through, clean up the wiring a little bit. Like like I said, I'd like to normally cut these out, but I don't think I'm going to need to do that for this guitar because, like I said, I may change these pickups out anyway. So we've got our bridge ground on. If you've ever looked in the back of your guitar, there's a little claw back there. Uh, when you have a tremolo system like this and a wire attaches to it, that's what this wire is. So that grounds to that. Got our switch, two tone pots, our tone pot and our volume pot. And we've got our little cap here, which I'm hoping doesn't bottom out. So we'll have to see how that goes. And then it's just the balancing act of running the wires through the channels in a fender to make it all fit. It's always one cable, one little wire making it a pain in the butt. So now that the wiring is done, we have to drill our new holes for the pick guard. Some of them are pretty close to the old ones. Okay, so I've had this problem before. I actually just got this thing all buttoned up and then I tested it because I always test before I do my final uh, put together the guitar, test the electronics, no sound, which led me to believe that something's grounded out. 99% of the time on a Squire, if something's grounding out and you've got shielding paint like that, it's the back of your switch. So, because Squires aren't as deep as fenders, so if you have a, a switch like I do here, which is more of a longer switch for fenders or some Ibanez and stuff, um, it's a good idea to cover the lugs with a couple pieces of tape like this to keep it from grounding out because usually they're just long enough to where they'll touch that shielding paint. Cut the resistor out the treble bleed, just left it where it was on the tone so that way I just have a regular tone pot now. Sorry, I blanked on that treble bleed. That's my be me being an idiot, just been going too fast and not paying attention. At any rate, now we have our so there we go that's our that's our humbucker for the bridge position so a little bit of treble roll off and then uh, the middle three positions act as the one middle because the way we resoldered that and then got our neck so everything is working we just have to get it put together anyway now let's see if our brass saddles fit because there's a chance they might not which these look more like American standard strat saddles so I like that yeah I think that'll be okay 
think we lucked out. That looks pretty good. They might be ever so slightly bigger, but I don't think it'll be a problem. All right, we got our strings through our bridge here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these strung up, get everything set up properly, and we'll test this guy out. I'm excited. Alright guys, so Coconut and I have been working very hard on our cross-country guitar swap, Joker-inspired guitar. And if you haven't been following this series, because let's face it, it's been broken up over a couple of years now, um, my buddy Kyle Jer Jeremio from Bearded Cat Plus uh, Guitars, Bearded Cat Guitars Plus, I believe, I'll put it on the thing. Oh good, I'm getting texts. Um, from Bearded Cat Guitar, he sent me this and I sent him a vintage harmony guitar so we swapped guitars he's in Oregon I'm in Florida totally opposite ends of the country um, I don't think he's got the harmony done so Kyle this is challenge to you man you get better get that done um, I really like these pickups I'm very surprised they have nice articulation they're super warm and I'm about to kick on the distortion here I'll show you that uh, even with a lot of gain, because I'm a I like gain. This is a Valve King here, so it's got some gain to it. Even with a lot of gain, they're nice and articulate, and I'll, I'll try to demonstrate that. But clean, and this is just the uh, bridge position right now. Part of my terrible playing, but anyway, it's got. Uh, just some nice mm, to it, but let's let's switch over. Not a lot of noise for the amount of gain I have on here too. That's a that's a very cool thing. Listen to the articulation of the notes ringing with all this gain on. So listen close. I'm not affiliated with Guitar Madness at all. That's where I got these pickups. Just go look them up on eBay. Um, I don't know if they import from China because these are cheap. I think I got both of them for around 30 bucks. Uh, I'm assuming they import from China, but whatever they do after the fact or however they spec these out, I'm assuming maybe they have them made. They sound great. Uh, this is the third set of pickups I've got from those guys that have sounded very comparable to a lot of the other pickups I use. So very, very like warm and punchy without being harsh in the mid-range. I, I dig these guys a lot. So I'm pretty stoked about our little Joker style guitar. I don't know what you guys think, but let me know in the comments. Tell Kyle to get to work. And uh, yeah, I, I'm missing a switch tip because I didn't realize I had a thousand Gibson switch tips, but I have no Fender ones for whatever reason, so nothing fits. But yeah, I'll do some glamour shots if I'm not already showing those. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.
okay, I can't keep playing that. <laughs> I get demonetized.